Hey, good afternoon to you. Mark Seventh Hurricane Track. It's Friday now, the 17th of October, 2025. Thank you very much for tuning in to today's video. Main topic, of course, is this potential for a hurricane to form in the Caribbean. going to be kind of short today because I'm going to skip over all the stuff we already know, or at least most of it. Water temps are warm. They're anomalously warm, climatologically favorable, all that stuff. We know all that. The background state seems to be favorable. Most of the model guidance, either the traditional models or the new AI models, all seem to indicate that something will develop in the Caribbean within about a week. So at least we have several days to watch this. And at the end of today's update, we're going to take a look once again at two of the deterministic models. That's pretty much all we have now until it becomes an invest area. And once it is labeled an invest area, we get a lot more guidance, intensity guidance, the hurricane-specific models, that kind of stuff. Right now, all we have are our observational tools and the global models. And so I'm going to show you the GFS and the Euro, another big clash uh, coming up between those two powerhouse global models. All right, well, let's start off like we usually do with a look at the National Hurricane Center homepage. Here's our area of interest. And by the way, well, let me use uh, green here just to outline the outlook area. Why is this so large? That kind of is a hint, because some of the models do develop it over here in the Eastern Caribbean. Others wait until it gets to the Western Caribbean. That is why the area, this hatched area through here, is as large as you see it there. 30% chance, uh, at least at the time I'm recording this video. What is this up here? I'll show you. It's one of these non-tropical systems that might, but probably won't, develop some subtropical characteristics. In fact, let's take a look at that first. Clearly it has a front attached. Uh, some convection in here, deep thunderstorms, well not that deep, but uh, the trick is do they concentrate more and bundle that energy more than what we're seeing? When I show you the vorticity, oh you'll totally get it. Another great example of how non-tropical, that's what this is, so we'll put an in there, versus tropical, this is our tropical wave, how they bundle that energy, that vorticity, really easy to show you. Elsewhere across the deep tropics, nothing. We're pretty much done now. Eh, you never know, something might sneak off, but uh, pretty much done with the tropical wave season and nothing in the Caribbean right now, certainly nothing in the Gulf. And we might very well end up this year, we'll put a big old check mark, that we don't have any major problems in the Gulf. We'll see. I don't want to jinx it, but so far, it's looking pretty darn good. So here's what it all looks like on the vorticity chart. And there you go. That's the system up in the North Atlantic. Look at all that energy spread out over a large area. You can see the front even on there. Versus, hey, look at that. It's starting to look more bundled and more energetic. And this is exactly why I like this product. Because you can look at it on satellite all day. Yes, this is a satellite product, but... You know what I mean, satellite imagery like we're used to seeing that shows clouds. Well, this shows the vorticity, uh, the relative vorticity down near the surface at 5,000 feet. So this might try to bundle up a little bit more, but it doesn't look like it. The models aren't too enthused about it. And yes, they do. The Hurricane Center issues advisories and you know, outlooks or whatever for systems up here because it matters. Not because they want to pad the score, but... For marine interest, you've got the sword fishing boats that come out of these areas. Did you see The Perfect Storm? Good movie, good book, by the way. And so there are marine interests out here that need to know about this kind of stuff. They really do. It's not all about you and what you think. Just, just telling you. All right, so here's what it looks like. And again, it's going to be a pretty short video today. GFS Operational 12Z Run. We're going to take a look at the 0Z Run of the Euro last night because the two probably could not be any further apart in terms of their outcomes. So first, let's take a look at the GFS, the Global Forecast System Operational Deterministic Model. One run, one model, one snapshot in time, right? And uh, this is the 5,000 foot level. We'll use this blue color here to highlight everything. 850 millibars, and our system is just right here, just off the screen or off the extent of the map. By the time I do another update, probably Sunday, traveling tomorrow doing some fun stuff with the family but Sunday I'll be back this thing will be on the map but anyway let's oh by the way too here's that gigantic system up in the North Atlantic lobes of vorticity but nothing 
coalescing, so I don't think it's going to make even subtropical status. But let's don't worry about that. Let's focus on what is going to be happening right down here and as that enters the Caribbean over the next few days. So we'll put this into motion frame by frame. It only takes about 48 hours at this point, and our tropical wave is fully in the frame now. There it is, approaching our friends in the Windward Islands here. So Barbados, you're up first. It'll pass that region with some squally weather. You'll notice it because it is a vigorous tropical wave. Let's go back to the satellite. That is it right there, and it's important because that is energy. That is a lot of tropical energy and uh, heat, and it's trying to develop slowly into a tropical cyclone. It's trying to take advantage of this favorable environment down here. So you folks in the Windward Islands will feel this as it comes through. So that's day two. Move this out to day three at 72 hours. It's still pretty broad and kind of stretched out by day four. It uh, starts to coalesce just a little bit there north of the South American coast. But notice all this energy spread out all, all across this area. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see if this does start to focus over here, like the GFS is indicating by day four, or does it stay more loosely organized and make its way over to the Western Caribbean with time? We'll put a question mark, because we don't know. I don't know. You don't know. Nobody knows. This is just the model's best interpretation out to 96 hours. Finally, by day five, we start to see some action here with our system. It starts to take shape to the north of, we'll call it the ABC Islands down here, if you're familiar with those. So here's where I want to take a look at the upper levels. Does this make sense? And the question, or the answer to that question, or I could say the question is answered with a yes, it does make sense. Pretty good overall outflow, upper level, and a cyclone over it. And so that looks favorable at the upper levels. What about the mid-level uh, moisture? Oh yeah. No dry air through here. That is not going to be a problem this time. So this is why it gives us here, all of us that are looking at this, and other people out there that you see on the social media, gives us a lot of concern that this could turn into something significant. And then you realize there's lots of land through here, maybe up here, but I'm, I'm not too concerned with the, the lower 48 just yet. But a lot of land in the way for this to interact with, especially... Uh, in the Caribbean. All right, so that's day five. Finally, by day six, it really starts to come together. But there is also a an attempt being made down here at bundling some energy. So will that compete? Is this spurious? Hard to say. Again, we don't know the outcome, but the GFS has been pretty persistent on this. I can prove it to you. That's day six. This is the previous runs. Day six is actually stronger in the previous run, in the previous run, you see, and it's that, in fact, you know, it's staying intact and uh, trying to get pretty strong there. That's day six, and then by day seven, it's well on its way. If we look at the lower levels, 10 meter wind, 987, probably a hurricane at that point. And that is why I had that headline today, Caribbean hurricane, question mark. It is possible. So I want to make sure our friends down there either in Hispaniola or Puerto Rico, the U.S. British Virgin Islands, maybe elsewhere east of there, that everybody is paying attention. The good news is we got a week. That's, you know, and again, that whole watch pot never boils thing. we got a week, but conditions look favorable. The GFS gets this going early compared to the Euro, and I'll show you that here. Let's make me disappear while you focus on the map. This is last night's Euro, but they're not separated by, you know, it's just 12 hours, so whatever. Uh, it's still, you know, accurate to show this. So this is the Euro from last night. There's our system coming in. You can see it nice and curled up right there. This is 54 hours out. And again, same point. Folks in the Windward Islands, you're going to have to deal with this first, no matter what. That's a guarantee. So in the Euro, it moves in, and by 96 to 120 hours, it's not doing a whole heck of a lot. There it is on the Euro, and to compare apples to apples, let's get it uh, where it matches up. 120 on the GFS, not quite the same time frame, but just check out better organized on the GFS at day five than on the Euro at day five. Similar positions, similar, but better organized on the GFS. Finally, uh, by day six, and then finally here at day seven, stop there, it starts to 
set up shop in the southwestern to western Caribbean versus the GFS, which of course is, move this out to 168, way over here. So I'll circle that as well so we can compare and contrast the two. Yep, quite the difference there, I would say, which gives us pause, like don't worry about it too much just yet. The geographic difference between those two is substantial and then the eventual outcome. So we'd have to just watch. At least we got the weekend. Don't worry about it too much. Football and baseball and hockey's back and all that good stuff, right? Uh, so just enjoy the weekend. I'll come back Sunday afternoon. Again, traveling tomorrow, doing some fun stuff with the family. Very important to do, by the way. So make sure you remember that, all right? And uh, we'll talk about it again Sunday. And until then, you know, don't sweat it. We'll watch and see what happens. Uh, we think something's coming, and we'll be ready for it. If there's a uh, Caribbean hurricane, we'll be on top of it, all right? All right, that's all I know. That's all I've got for today. Have a good rest of your Friday, and enjoy your Saturday, and I'll see you again on Sunday. I am Mark Suddeth from all of us at Hurricane Track. Thanks for watching. I'll see you Sunday afternoon.